Good afternoon. No, 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 no. Good afternoon. Hi there. So we are really excited about being able to share our journey with you today. We're just going to do our top 10. Um, so we've only got about 20 minutes, but we want to thank NeuroChallenge for giving us the opportunity to speak with you tonight, um, or this afternoon, rather, sorry. So we began this journey about 20-some years ago, probably in the early 2000s, Pete was diagnosed, and, but we can date it back quite a ways before that. Okay, we're going to do our top 10. We're going to start with the Parkinson's fatigue. How many people have that Parkinson's fatigue? We all know about that, right? Oh, well, it's wonderful. So the very top tip that I'll mention to you today, oh, real quickly, all of these tips are in your handout, they're in your bag, so you don't have to take notes, you can just pay attention and uh, have some fun along the way. The most important thing is to focus your good time of the day, all your tasks. So if you're a morning person, that's when things are working well for you, make sure you're doing the things you wanna do in that part of the day. And make a routine to make sure that you get up and get going every single day. Here's my schedule. 4.30, I get up. 4.30 a.m., I get up. He goes to bed at 8. I have some breakfast. At 5.30, I go meet a group of friends for coffee. At 6.30, I'm on the golf course. That's my day. On Sunday, I teach a Christian ed class. And at noon, I'm on the golf course. Monday, I teach a Parkinson's exercise class. And noon, I'm on the golf course. And I teach a, another one on Wednesday. And after that, I'm on the golf course. You see a trend going on here, Routine, right? routine, routine. Four! <laughs> yeah, so he has a reason to get up and get moving every single day. Because if he didn't, what would he be doing? Sleeping. Sleeping. All right, so that's really important. Now, naps. My husband is the king of naps, loves to nap, would nap all the time if he was allowed but I'm the nap police. So unfortunately, he's not allowed to nap all day, which is a good thing. You should really only nap 45 to 60 minutes a day. We should all take a nap. That's an important thing that we should do. But what's even more important is after that nap, get up and do something. Move around. You've stored up some of that energy, use it. All right, number nine, managing stress. We all know with Parkinson's, the stress level's much higher than average, right? Little things are big stressors. So it's really important to make sure that we as care providers only share the things they really need to know. I don't need to know that she had a fight with her sister. <laughs> so he, and, and us females anyway, we tend to be sharers. So it's gotten a little hard for me to make sure that I'm not sharing all the little stupid little things with him because it really does stress him out. He only needs to know the important things. And one of the more important things that happens that can cause stress is multitasking. So it's really important to single thread your day. Don't try to do too many things at once. It will not work out. And when one of the things that does happen with multitasking is if I have to tell him something that he needs to remember, we found out quite a few years ago that unless I had his full attention, it didn't get written down. I'd tell him, he'd respond to me as if we're having a regular conversation. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> but the week later, when that event occurred, he was like, You never told me about that. And I was like, Wait a minute. Yes, I did. Figured out that I need to have his full attention. So when we have a little thing that and I say to him, Listen, you need to remember this one, what do you do? Make eye contact with you because That's I love you. <laughs> He stops, and we have a conversation about it, and bingo, it gets written, and then he remembers it. So that's another tip that we like to give out to everybody. All right, number eight, nutrition. The key to nutrition is routine. The key to all your days are routine with Parkinson's. The better a routine, the better your day. Good nutrition is very important, and doing your meds and your meals at the same time really makes the day a lot, lot easier. You want to talk about your routine? I try to make sure that I take my meds exactly at the same time every day. I also, when I was diagnosed, thought 
I could handle Parkinson's, but I don't want anything else that could come with bad nutrition. Bad nutrition can bring you hypertension. Bad nutrition can bring you type 2 diabetes and hypertension, type 2 diabetes and high cholesterol. I don't want any of the big three. So I went into the gym and I started exercising and eating properly years ago. Yeah. So one of the key things is a good diet. People ask us all the time, what's the best diet for Parkinson's? And what our doctors have told us over the years is the Mediterranean diet. Lots of nuts, lots of fish, that kind of thing. And it's been mentioned a couple of times today, um, there is competition in the gut for absorption of your carbidopa, levodopa when you eat protein. If you can avoid it, great. If you can't, don't worry about it because sometimes you can't. He takes meds every three hours. You're not going to avoid protein. But just be aware of it so you're not taking your meds with a glass of milk, that kind of thing, right? Now, constipation, another big problem with Parkinson's or can be. One of the things we learned was get up and walk after you eat. After we tend to have our big dinner, we sit down, watch Jeopardy, maybe Wheel of Fortune. Movement can help movement. <laughs> that is true. And hydration. Oh my gosh, can't talk about that enough. Six to eight glasses of water a day. Yes, you need to be near a bathroom, but it'll keep things moving. Very, very important. Okay, staying social. If it was up to him, we wouldn't go anywhere, we wouldn't do anything, we might not meet with a lot of people. It's very, very important to stay social when you have Parkinson's. I'm a social animal, what are you, kidding? <laughs> so one of the neat things we did early on was we educated our friends of what was going on. We told them about what it was like having Parkinson's and the fact that, okay, we used to have 10 or 12 people we get together to go to dinner. Now we prefer four to six. A smaller group is easier for him to manage. There's not so many conversations going on. He can keep track of it. So don't feel slighted when we only invite this group the first time. We'll catch you in the next time. That kind of thing is very, very important. And apathy. Who's got the apathy thing going on? I see all the caregivers going, yeah, what's going on with that? She'll say, where do you want to go to eat? I said, I don't care. He doesn't care. Well, that's good news for me because we can eat wherever I want to eat. But seriously, I don't just avoid those open-ended questions because it gets frustrating. Where do you want to eat? What do you want? Where do you want to go tonight? Where do you want to this or that? It's just going to frustrate you. Give a couple choices or even just pick one and say, hey, we're going here tonight. Your answer is usually whatever. <laughs> Okay, number six, medication. Very key to Parkinson's. You've heard a lot about it today. But it's very important to know what you're taking and why you're taking it. I take my meds on time for a real good reason. If you get behind, it takes a long time to get back up. I want to be like this the whole day. I don't want to be like this. I can afford a few of these, but I'd rather have nice, easy dopamine production in the brain. Day, all day long. Right. So taking them on time, even if you're feeling good, guess what? You're feeling good and you wait. I can wait. I'm going to wait. Then you wait, and by the time you're way off, you take them. It's going to take that much longer to get you back on. So don't do that. Whenever your doctor says to take them, take them. Very, very important. We also have a, a piece of paper on the counter that he tracks as, if he's having some fluctuation for a couple of days and we're saying, hey, wait a minute, this is starting to become an issue. He starts to track what he, what's going on with his on and off times on a piece of paper on that counter. So we have it all written down the next time we go to the doctors. Me, 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 Voice. Voice. I haven't gotten there yet. There it is. My card says <laughs> his card says voice. <laughs> okay. How many caregivers have said this word what today? Raise your hand. Okay, PWPs, people with Parkinson's, remember, when you're speaking, it sounds plenty loud in your head, but it ain't loud enough to the other people, or they wouldn't be saying, what, 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 what? So one of the things we figured out early on, because Pete was losing his voice, getting much softer, was we needed a speech pathologist. And we just had one standing up here, and she is our, Mary is our speech pathologist. We're very fortunate in Punta Gorda to have her with us. Um, it is a must for your team. Add it to your team. It's got to be somebody 
that you're working with, and it's not a once and done thing. It goes on and on and on. It's like exercise. You've got to exercise your voice to keep it. And what happens when you have to repeat? It takes up precious energy. You don't have a lot of energy. Say it once and you'll be done loud enough. Right. The other thing, too, is being in the same room when you're communicating. We have a big thing about that. And every once in a while, one of us forgets, and the other one goes, we're not in the same room. So we have to make sure that that happens. And speaking in short sentences, you don't have to go on and 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 on. Break it up. Take a breath. Like you're reading a poem. Okay, moving along. Sleep. Very important. If you don't have a good night's sleep, you will not have a good day. This is the beginning of the fashion show. <laughs> so one of the things we learned early on was that satin pajamas was a good addition to his wardrobe. He's got the Hugh Hefner look going on because what happens is at night when you try to roll over with Parkinson's, you're stiff. You called it like having Velcro. Being if you, once you start with the satin pajamas and the satin sheets, cotton feels like Velcro. You'll, yeah. And you wake yourself up, so and therefore you can't get a good night's right. sleep. Right, so every time you turn it over, you're waking yourself up. Not a good night's sleep. As soon as the satin pajamas got into his wardrobe, sleep was much, much easier. He also uses a satin bottom sheet as well. So it's a little slip and slide going on, which, will, which works really well. But the other thing that we've done is Pete does have REM sleep disorder. He does take some meds for it, so it's not so bad. But he does punch and kick at night, have some arguments, talks to himself out loud. <laughs> so we started using separate rooms, separate bedrooms, probably seven or eight years ago. Um, and it You don't have to tell them that. Oh, okay, sorry. Just a few months ago. Last night. <laughs> but it results in better sleep for both of us. It really does. Um, the other thing is the bed rail. You want to tell them the bed rail story quickly? I one night punched the nightstand. Bloody knuckles in a dream. Then I got the bed rail, punched the bed rail, it's metal, got bloody knuckles again. <laughs> so now I've got a pillow tied to the bed rail, and I punch it, and it doesn't hurt as much. That's right, that's right. So the important thing is to make sure you're in a safe environment. So one time he, he punched the nightstand, actually ended up on the floor, which was not good. And that morning he said to me, we're going to go buy a, a bed rail, and I go, why? He goes, well... I'll tell you why. So we did. We bought a little half bed rail. It's on the bed. Actually helps him get out of bed as well. But we did have to put a pillow on it because he did punch that the next night. So. Anyway, a good night's sleep equals a good day. Absolutely key. Absolutely important. When I say satin pajamas, satin sheets, we're talking about polyester. They're very inexpensive on Amazon. You can get them. They, we, they go with us everywhere. Every time we travel, they come with us. And it makes life a lot easier. All right, number three. This is your favorite. Ooh. What I started to do when I was diagnosed with Parkinson's is go to the gym every day. Uh, people told me that it was going to take my balance away. It was going to take away all these things. And I said, bull. So I went to the gym every day, sometimes twice a day, to work out on a regular basis. And I truly believe that has helped me in my progression of the disease. I'm standing here right now going a little bit off my meds, but I've had this stuff 25 years. Yeah, so when he got diagnosed back in 2005, um, he decided, he was still working, he decided, okay, I can handle Parkinson's, I don't want anything else, and he's got some pretty bad genes in his family, diabetes, cancer, lots of other crazy things. Oh boy. So, <laughs> and Parkinson's. So. <laughs> He decided, I can handle that. I don't want anything else. I'm going to start going to the gym. And he went to the gym every single day for eight years. And I'm telling you, every single day, he did, religiously. Some days he would go, he would go either before work in the morning or go at night. Some days he went both because it made him feel better. And he just said, I'm going to fight this as best I can. 
You see this picture up here? That is him. That was inspired by a blonde PT, 30 years my junior. It's amazing what women can get you to do. We'll take the motivation wherever we can get it. Absolutely. But that is him. He's actually got better balance than I do, and he works on it all the time. And it's very important. Exercise, you've heard about it before. We talk about it a lot. Can't emphasize it enough. Better posture keeps you mobile. That's the absolute key thing. Keeps, flex keeps you flexible um, and really a positive attitude, right? Get those endorphins working. And I will tell you, when we go to the doctors, he's the poster child because somebody who's had Parkinson's over 25 years shouldn't be in this good a shape. So they always go, wait a minute, what have you been doing? And he says, oh, I've been exercising. So it works. And guess what? It's something you can do together. Oh boy. <laughs> I can hardly wait. Okay. One of the more important things, and we're getting close to the number one thing here, but number two is being agreement about our care. We are in lockstep. We go to each other's doctor's appointments together. We um, absolutely early, early on found out a movement disorder specialist was the right person to see. We were seeing a regular neurologist at the beginning, and he was kind of like, okay, well, I think we'll do this and we'll do that. And once we figured out that these other people exist, we were like, what a, what a difference. Got together with our first movement disorder specialist, made a world of difference, encourage you all to at least see one, if not seeing it all the time. And communication with your doctor is absolutely key. You gotta be a partnership with your doctor on your medication, why you're taking it, when you're taking it, all those kinds of things. I talked about this pad of paper, oh, go ahead. Okay, real quick. Pad of paper on our counter. There is a pad of paper on our counter. We talk about off times and on times, but we write down anything that happens that's unusual. And it maybe happens once. And if it happens again, we write it down. Because we only see the neurologist every quarter, every three months. So I'm not going to remember what happened three months ago. And I've got the good brain. Ha ha ha. I don't know if that's true or not. <laughs> <laughs> that's not true. Yeah, okay. <laughs> So anyway, the pad of paper is absolutely key. It reminds me, it goes right into the doctor's office with us, and we go, hey, two months ago, this thing happened, or I noticed this. And the doctor will say, well, that doesn't sound like Parkinson's. Go get this checked out. Or, yeah, that's Parkinson's. So that's very, very important. I encourage everybody to do that. That pad of paper never leaves that counter unless we're going to the doctor. People are on the edge of their seats waiting for number one. They are. They are. I can see them. Okay. All right, we're getting there. Number one. One must have a sense of humor. If you don't have one, go get it. Okay, it's so one of the things that we do is we laugh a lot and often just about every day. It is the thing that has kept us going for the past 20 some years with this, with this crazy disease. And it is the medication that really works, right? It's free, no side effects. And the key thing is it helps all the people around you feel at ease. And that's the most important thing. That helps with your socialization, keeps all your friends comfortable with what's happening. So when we moved down to Florida. People started asking us, okay, what'd you used to do? And they would say to Pete, what was your previous, what'd you do in your previous career? And he would respond. I would tell him I was a family photographer. But they fired me because I hollered at him and told them to stand still. And then De Beers hired me as a diamond cutter. Apparently, square diamonds aren't in vogue. I joined the Army. I said, how did I get it fired from the Army? I was a bomb diffuser. They called me Nine Fingers Pete. I was a traffic cop. That didn't work out either. I was a fragrance tester. <laughs> oh, to nothing is what I had. A neurosurgeon, and I'm going to have a new career. I'm going to be in the next James Bond movie. I'm going to be the bartender, shaking or stirred. Okay. And I will tell you, he does play golf almost every day, and. He's not a very good golfer. He's never been a very good golfer. Sorry. That, you don't you, have to tell him that. Okay. 
But they all love playing golf with Pete because he's the joke teller. He's the one that keeps everybody laughing, and that's what's important, and that's what keeps these people in his life. All right, something we picked up um, just a couple of weeks ago. This came from um, Dr. Rodriguez. He's in, in Orlando. Rule, his four rules to live by, five rules to live by. We talked about exercise, cognitive exercise, brain games, puzzles, very, very important, socialization, sleep, and brain food. Lots of nuts, lots of fish. Okay, we're done. <laughs> but I just wanted to leave you with, you really can live well with Parkinson's. You just have to make some changes along the way, small little changes as you go, but you can stay social, you can stay active, but you gotta put the effort into it. So it's very important. Thank you.